Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, meanwhile, revealed his company's new branding and new name as Meta. The company also changing its stock ticker to MRVS, Metaverse, short for Metaverse, the mixed reality platform which allows users to interact in a completely virtual world. Here's Mark Zuckerberg yesterday. Watch this. Our mission remains the same. It's still about bringing people together. But now we have a new North Star to help bring the metaverse to life. And we have a new name that reflects the full breadth of what we do and the future that we want to help build. From now on, we're going to be metaverse first, not Facebook first. Metaverse first. The rebranding comes as the social media giant faces growing backlash following that whistleblower, Francis Haugen, accusing the company of prioritizing making money over the public good and that they knew that their products were hurting teenagers. Joining me right now is the CEO of Parlor, George Farmer. George, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much. I was thinking about you the other day when all of this new uh, Metaverse conversation was, was uh, taking shape. What are what are your thoughts on the metaverse and reaction to the new name at Facebook? Yeah, good morning, Maria. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I was really struggling not to not to break a laugh just then when I was listening to uh, to Mark, uh, good good old Mark, telling us about his next plan for humanity. Um, I mean, it, it's it's somewhat <laughs> like a satirical Babylon B website headline. I think you know, Facebook rebrands itself into a transhumanist metaverse. I mean, it's just terrifying. Um, you know, this this it is the stuff is. of nightmares, really. Um, so, I mean, I was, I was not. I, I thought it was, yeah. As I say, I thought it was satire first of all, and then when I read it, I was like, gosh, this is actually happening. Um, and this is this is the direction he wants to take the company into, which I find odd. Um, you know, becoming this sort of transhumanist. Every part of your life will be run by Facebook. Virtual reality will actually be how you inter interconnect with people. Um, you know, generally, this is probably the direction that most people do not want tech to go. They do not want it to be a bigger part of their life. They do not want it to be more integrated. They actually want more freedom, more privacy, more uh, constraints of the tech giants from entering your life rather than less. Uh, so I'm not sure this is going to be, you know, a, a successful uh, direction of the company. But, you know, obviously he thinks differently. Well, talk about living in a fake world. I mean, it's it's you're right. When I first saw it, I said, you know, this is scary. I was frightened by some impacts of AI to begin with. But now this whole virtual reality is going to be the reality of Facebook. How much of this is just changing the conversation, George? The fact that we know what has taken place because of the evidence that the products hurt teenagers and they knew it. Um, is this partly let's let let's look over here and not over here? Yeah, well, I think I think that's actually hit the nail on the head, which is that Facebook, you know, part of the whistleblowers reports, which I found very interesting. In fact, the most interesting part of that report, really, the whole Facebook whistleblower case was the internal metrics of demographics, which they actually released, which she released when she talked about the uh, the internal files. That shows that Facebook is going to be losing 45% of its youth demographic by 2023. I mean, this is very, very short-term stuff. Um, this is not some sort mm. of, you know, in 20 years' time, we're going to have a problem. This is in two years' time, we have a massive issue. Um, and so yeah. Facebook is desperately trying to scramble to kind of reallocate resources and time and efforts into some new company pitch. Um, you know, people don't use Facebook a lot. Instagram has long supported it. WhatsApp, of course, yeah. um, is, its, is its messaging service. These are the two things that it's relied upon. Uh, Facebook's actual user demographics are declining. Interesting. And, and now you've got, as we've been reporting, the Federal Trade Commission uh, also among those probing the company. So enter President Trump and his new social media platform, Truth Social. Uh, George, what's your take on uh, the former president's plans for this new social media company called Truth Social? Yeah, well, I welcome all the competition in the marketplace, um, and I and I think uh, President Trump is, you know, carving his own path there. Um, you know, I think what what's interesting about the TMTG group, which of course, you know, is the broader group as a whole, is that they've got quite ambitious plans to take on, you know, a variety of different uh, different tech giants, if you like. You know, there's a streaming element to it. There's a, you know, there's a cloud element to it. Um, and of course, there is the true social element to it. And I think that, that, you know, that's welcome. I mean, you know, we need as many competitors in this space as possible. You know, Twitter, of course, is the dominant giant. Facebook is out there. Instagram is out there. 
And I think competition makes the marketplace a healthy place for our consumer choice. So I, I generally welcome more competition to the space. And, and, and certainly competition to some of the censorship that we've seen out there away from Parler, obviously. George, it's always great to catch up. Thanks so much. Great to see you, Maria.